Hello and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rich Longo of Flycast Partners, and I'd like to thank you for joining us for today's presentation on BMC Helix. Now, today we're going to talk about Helix, uh, how it can help and relate to those of you that are in government agencies and state agencies, but it also does apply to commercial. Our presenters today are David Schmidt and Charles Bins of BMC, and we're very happy to have them today. They've taken uh, time out of their very busy schedules for us. So I want to welcome them. And David is a director of digital service operations management marketing for BMC Helix. He is responsible for all aspects of the worldwide market approach, including branding, positioning, audience-based messaging, and online content vehicles. David works closely with product marketing teams, corporate marketing teams, product management, and sales teams to evangelize the BMC Helix message and build customer relationships and develop solution-focused content. He has well over 20 years in the IT space. That brings us to Charles, who has well over 30 years in the IT industry and many roles ranging from consultant to his current position of Director of SaaS Operations at BMC. He's played an active part in SaaS operations space, more current, most currently holding the responsibility of BMC Helix planning strategy and delivery. His intimate knowledge of BMC Helix has been instrumental in the success of many BMC Helix customers. Before we get started today, let me introduce Flycast Partners. Flycast Partners offers best-in-class implementation services and training in IT service management, IT asset management, IT operations management, IT security, enterprise service management, workload automation spaces, all using ITIL best practice. Our professional services team has well over 5,600 professional services engagements on site and remote. And as an organization, Flycast Partners has over 1,200 regular customers throughout all of Canada and United States, actually closer to 1,300. We've made some strides recently. I encourage you to reach out to us at 844-FLYCAST. That's 844-359-2278. Or visit our website. We have IT experts standing by Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. just to chat with you. They're there to answer questions, get you data sheets, white papers, whatever it is you might be looking for. And they can also help you get training, remote administration support, and tech support. We also invite you to email us at info at flycastpartners.com. like to invite all of you to please participate in our weekly raffle. That's right. We're raffling off these beautiful 25-watt Bluetooth speakers with our 10-year anniversary logo on them. Uh, we're granting one prize each and every week, and that is open to anyone who wishes to uh, go ahead and submit an entry. I also invite those of you that are current customers of Flycast, Flycast Partners to please enter for a chance for us to buy you and your team lunch up to $500. We're happy to buy lunch for you and your IT team. So please go to our website. Uh, we do ask that you type all your questions in. Uh, we'll answer what we can as time allows, although we do have a tight time schedule today with a lot of material. So I believe the majority of the questions that you type in, we will go ahead and get back with you within five business days to get those answered, but still type them in. We're happy to get the answers that you're looking for. We'll get those to you as soon as possible. Uh, without further delay, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to David. It's all yours, sir. Thanks, Rich. Hi, I'm Dave Schmidt with uh, BMC, and we're here today to talk about modernizing with uh, BMC Helix. So let's, without further ado, let's go in the overview of BMC Helix and what it brings to service and operations. If you take a look at the current status of what is going on in the modern digital economy, you know, the, the, the pressure to succeed obviously has never been higher. Uh, and the reason to accelerate has never been uh, more dire than now. And so, you know, as again, this last year has certainly shown us not only to move and accelerate uh, at the speed of what is known, but move uh, even faster and deliver those uh, compelling innovations, as well as also having the agility and scalability to really rapidly adjust uh, to different market conditions, different uh, business conditions, and really make sure that you know you're 
able to address what needs to be done for market success. But <clears throat> the bar is not only set to that, that also uh, is very important to, to never forget that when you need to talk with customers, whether it be the employees inside the enterprise or outside, engaging with customers with those really immersive and compelling experiences is paramount. That is uh, not only just table stakes, but that is certainly something that if done right can be a key differentiator for, for your services and your organization. As we've certainly found out uh, over the past year, not only the always on workforce, but the always connected, especially in a distributed and very disparate uh, enterprise environment uh, is, is very much important to tie together that worldwide uh, type of experience. And again, the other part of it too, even with the complex you know, infrastructure uh, that we saw with a lot of folks working remotely, you still need to be able to deliver those compelling, dependable, uh, the way it's supposed to perform type of, of, of solutions and services. And certainly, you know, the other thing which, you know, a lot of people kind of kind of gloss over, but is critically important too, all this has to be seamless. Having uh, blackouts, having uh, downtime, having uh, unexpected events where the tools or services needed are either out or performing at a slower rate or no longer even tolerated. And so a lot of organizations actually need to resolve problems before they even manifest itself uh, and affect and impact the end user uh, experiences on there. From a complication standpoint, you know, that, that really means that, again, as I mentioned earlier, you need to move at ever increasing velocity. Uh, and that's ever increasing velocity for both changes and for fixes and for everything to help bolster up what the experience and the services need to have in the organization. Also, the complexity of the of the infrastructure has never been more complicated and will continue to be complicated not only again with the remote workforce but things like iot other different types of devices that impact and also leverage and deliver those compelling experiences need to have that you know completely modern uh, not only management capabilities but also make sure that when you're rolling things out you don't inadvertently interrupt or break things along the way Certainly from, as we've well known here uh, in the industry, the folks that are consuming those services or those tools or the application choose what and how they wanna go, uh, you know, ingest those. And again, especially as they're working remote, the myriad and difference of devices that they're consuming these things uh, has never been more diversified than, than nowadays. And certainly again, as we're going digital, the explosion of, of this data and all the dependencies on it uh, and really creates this huge uh, wealth of knowledge, but very rarely do you ever get to explore the full extent of that. Uh, there's you know, studies out there that you know, petabytes or zettabytes of data are created daily, yet probably maybe less than 1% is ever analyzed. I looked at because it's just a huge amount of data uh, to to both to both look at, but again, it, it's it's all there for it. And one of the other um, uh, things too is that it's not only just doing business as business as normal. It's you need to make sure that you have those uh, innovations, those things that will help break through. Not in terms of also doing productivity, but also delivering compelling services into the marketplace. So with all that in mind, what we did here is we you know launched BMC Helix. Uh, back in mid 2018. And the whole idea here was to seamlessly scale across the entire enterprise and focus in on a couple different types of things. It's really to help make better decisions faster. Uh, and you do that by enabling and making the, the, the service desk or the operations manager or even the employees have the best data and information uh, available with the best analytics so they can make the most intelligent uh, type of decision. All of that is based on a level of AI and uh, predictive automation. And again, scales across the entire enterprise. As you're moving faster and lines of business are lining up, they're gonna use a variety of different uh, solutions and services they need to do in order to make and succeed on their, on their business goals. Service and management operations uh, solutions 
need to then scale across that and not only understand what that is, but then bring it in a part of the bigger picture because at the end of the day, when something goes wrong, there's gonna be a call to the service desk or to the operations desk. So if you look at our major focus areas for BMC Helix and what we're, what we're doing, it's, it's service management, but it's really AI service management. It's making the, the service desk intelligent. And what does that mean? It again, means that you need to have the right information at the right time to make the right decision with all the different uh, parameters there. It also means that you can self uh, heal and self remediate uh, different types of, of issues like level zero, level one, reset my password, provision software. So there's a variety of different things in there that you can reserve for the service desk agent to then focus on the higher end type of issues and or focus on delivering those compelling innovations going forward. Along with that, having you know, intelligent operations. So the whole idea here is, again, to look and resolve problems before they manifest itself into something that interrupts service or you know, degrades the service type of experience and making sure that they can optimize, again, this whole complex um, enterprise infrastructure and make sure that you know, there's not that trickle uh, effect going on and also make sure that you know, the operations side of the house has the performance on there. Because again, compelling experiences also means that the services act and behave the way that you're supposed to or delight. And obviously operations has a big part into that. Certainly the, the other big part of it across the entire enterprise is this is be, make everybody self-sufficient. So what does that mean? That means that we're no longer waiting in lines. We're no longer waiting in queues. We're no longer taking a ticket and waiting for our problems to be solved. We want to be in charge of our own destiny. We want to be able to get the information we need to have, remove the blockers and be able to get back to what we really are focusing on and what was really essential for us to succeed. And again, that's across the board on both the enterprise as well as also the customers that are, that are you know, consuming the enterprise's services. And then the last part of, again, alongside with having that intelligent operations and making sure that things are working on it, have that service assurance and, and that optimization for it to scale up you know, during peak times or to make sure that you know, the, the service level agreements are met to, or just even having an imbalance of, you know, we know um, where the, the operator is gonna need to have uh, more horsepower, more disk or more memory and be able to allocate that uh, seamlessly. And again, all that based on a fundamental platform that really has a, a discover layer for uh, service and operations to be able to, again, seamlessly at the foundation at the at the platform level go across the the organization and really instead of it being a brokering from the tool standpoint it's really looking at what the data is and then bringing that into some semblance of of you know digestibility analytics as well as also implications of what all that could be and then if you look at the the last on the five bowls down below that helps with organizations evolve to becoming an autonomous digital enterprise where they're able to deliver that transcendent customer experience, have the intelligent automation there so that way you can move at the velocity and the accuracy that you need to do. Make sure that you have the, the capabilities for doing enterprise-wide you know, innovation and, and innovation bubbles. All of it based on, on data and analytics and certainly uh, have it be secure and have it uh, adhere to the right governance. Along with all that, as a, to support these modern uh, initiatives and support the modern requirements for this uh, a digital economy, you know, really the, the infrastructure standpoint and the deployment standpoint needs to be agnostic. We completely realize that you know, in this, again, complex environment, it's no longer acceptable uh, like it was in traditional ways of being, here's the monolithic way that you have to go do it, and it's only this one way. It's all about choice and all about having a wide disparate uh, environment. And you could even make the, the argument here too, uh, especially over this last year, that there are now uh, remote uh, areas here that need to be consideration of, you know, for both residential uh, type of areas for employees working, working at, at distance or working away from the office. So again, you know, BMC Helix was born and, and deployed with all these kind of criteria in mind. One of the ways where we're able to go do that is a whole idea of containerization. Containerization has been an industry buzzword for a while now and has been actually been deployed 
uh, and in production, critical production, for many, many years. And if you look at some of the different facts on what containerization uh, has done in the production environment, you know, over 75, three quarters of the enterprise are running kind of, uh, containerized applications and services, critical applications and services uh, in production uh, by 2022. And I would imagine that number is probably a little low. I think that would be a little bit higher. And the main reason on that again, is the ease and the quickness of, of deploying. Uh, the, also the, the way of making sure that you can uh, deploy effectively and, and manage effectively as well. That has that scalability because you can no longer say, okay, we're gonna go into a six week or, or eight week beta test. We're gonna you know, then kind of test drive it out. We're gonna take down maybe the infrastructure for a while and then bring things back up. This has to be very, very quick and again, uh, as we like to say here at BMC, it's all about running and reinventing. So while the critical business is running, you need to do the innovations and reinvent along the way, but you can't stop running. You got to make sure that everything is going, going uh, forward. Certainly one of the things that, and again, I will say that uh, this is also probably a pretty conservative effort. Uh, from last year, you know, the, the you know, almost 30% growth rate of, of applications in containers were deployed last year. That number is probably uh, getting closer to around 40 or 45%. And again, the whole idea is that, you know, when we were radically changed from not going to the office to being out into remote, the ability to very agilely and very securely uh, and quickly change the entire way we do services and operations changed overnight from a, mon a single office or office you know uh, environments to then a wide disparate distributed network of a variety of different types of remote uh, users and that certainly you know that scalability and that the flexibility uh, containers lend itself to a, a a great method on there and again we'll go into a little more detail uh, uh, later on in the presentation, but you know, certainly from uh, from BMC standpoint, with BMC Helix born in containers, we have you know invested years uh, in in this in production uh, and and managing and tr and making sure that from a service and operations standpoint, you know, this is the the method that we can go down to. So, as we're approaching you know uh, this year, we are certainly looking at you know BMC Helix. Uh, to be able to, in containers, and be able to have that avenue for, for Remedy customers to go ahead and, and upgrade it and migrate to BMC Helix ITSM on containers on premise. And the biggest thing here is that it really makes your investments in, in Remedy that much more valuable because the reason is that you're able to use and keep the legacy things that you have that are working, that, that don't need to have, that are critical systems that you need to have. You can keep running those. And then you get now access to reinvent with all the modern intelligent automation, AI capabilities that BMC Helix brings to the table at your pace and at your speed. And so this really, again, makes it, you know, kind of the old saying of have your cake and eat it too. It really allows you to, you know, keep again, running and reinventing uh, of what you want to do for your service operations standpoint. It gives you that flexibility uh, to be not only portable, but again, the flexibility to again, agilely react uh, and be able to do a variety of different types of hybrid types of approaches uh, and making sure that you have the right, you know, uh, ways to adjust to the different market uh, conditions out there. Um, easier to deploy and manage. It is a modern type of system. It is designed uh, to work at that at that speed and designed to make sure that you have the easiest access to work in the environment that is again in the in the modern type type of of, of, of world here. Um, again, you can read the rest of the slide on here. It is it it brings a lot of different benefits uh, to the table of what we're uh, what containerization does uh, in terms of not only helping to drive change and to get those compelling innovations out there, but then to ongoing uh, day to day management uh, and also um, you know help mitigate when problems come rise. You know, certainly further on, you know, the, the whole idea uh, again here too is along with the, the manageability, the, the whole idea of orchestration. So a lot of things we talked about from the platform standpoint of going through those silos, you know, really, you know, getting to the data of those different types of tools. 
this helps us drive in that fundamentally different direction. And what that really means is that you're now switching from a point, single point solution standpoint to now a series of microservices uh, and, mic and microservices architecture. And again, that wholly helps on making sure that you have that, that, that high availability, the ability to also start spin up services and, and, and uh, end of life services or spin down services and be able to you know, run that automation across the stack with knowable outcomes because there's certain standard ways of approaching this and certain ways to enabling that, that, uh, that speed and that innovation. Uh, it really helps you, again, uh, break through the silos to get not only just deploying of different services out there, but also be able to have that observability of looking across and understanding what's going on in the entire enterprise. So you're not just looking at a small, you know, uh, short lens. You're looking at what is um, the interdependencies across, again, the vast complex uh, uh, architecture. So to sum up, uh, you know, BMC is bringing um, a variety of different, the BMC Helix uh, technologies uh, to be able to be deployed on premise in containers. And this really, again, allows you for, you know, moving from uh, the traditional types of systems, advanced systems into really open up and make sure that you are, can run and reinvent. Take those critical systems you have now that are critical for what you want to go do, have the, uh, in, uh, the upgrade ability to get access to the latest and greatest, you know, modern type of technologies. So with that, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn it over to Charles Benz, who's going to go into much more deeper de details of BMC Helix, BMC Helix on containers, and what they could bring to you as a customer. Thank you, David. So um, hopefully you can all see my screen now. Uh, so my name is Charles Binns, Director of SaaS Product Management at BMC. And today I'm gonna to take you through a series of slides which will describe our Helix service, specifically it relates, relates to the federal um, space as we see it today. So BMC's cloud journey, um, you know, we started uh, over 12 years ago now. And we started out essentially with, with one service and one data center and essentially one customer. And you heard David mention throughout the years, and it was about in then 2018, we launched our Helix service. But it didn't just start with the Helix service. It started with, as I said, sort of one application that we built into a SaaS service. And now all services are built SaaS first with a containerization approach. And back in obviously 2016, we, we attained our first uh, uh, authorization to operate with our FedRAMP moderate offering. So BMC today with our Helix service is enterprise scale. So we're averaging 99.98% availability. And that's not just across that one service that we started with. You heard David there talking about all those new services that, that, that we have. So it's ITSM, our, our AI, our operations management, our security operations, our monitoring, our IT service management, our digital workplace, all of these services and solutions are running across many data centers around the globe, which we'll talk about in a second. We have well over 1,600 companies now using the service with over 20 million end users. So how do we deliver this Helix service to our customers? So you may be familiar with a, a, an on-premises or perpetual model if you've used um, software vendors before. They, you, know, you buy a license, you consume the license, you install it and you run it yourself. And if you, if you have an issue with that, you call up the, the vendor for support and they'll uh, work through the issue and resolve it for you. In SaaS, the model is a little different, particularly in Helix. So with Helix, we offer 24 by seven support as standard. We contract a 99.9% .9 availability. With service credits, should we ever breach that availability? And in SEV1, for example, you may notice that I've got a little asterisk against the SEV1 for our response times goals. And by the way, these response time goals are second to none in the industry. So we're leading the way in our responsiveness to our customers. 
And this is not just a, an automated response with a, a, a ticket reference. This is more information than that. So we've actually started working on your ticket and we're helping you to resolve quickly. But of course in SaaS, we know what's going on because we own the service, we own the software, we own the, the, you know, the databases, et cetera. So we can see what's going on. And we're proactively monitoring all of these measures to ensure that we find about if there's any issues and fix them and restore service before your service is affected. And for a SEV1 that is service impacting, um, if we don't fix or restore that service uh, severity one ticket um, within about 43 minutes, because it does differ the number of minutes and hours in a month, but let's say around 43 minutes, then we'll be offering our customers service credits um, for that. And of course, you as a customer, you're not really interested in service credits, I'm sure. You're interested in 100% availability. And as are we at BMC, we're not interested in giving out service credits. We also are focusing on that high availability. So with patches and upgrades um, at BMC, something else which is included full as part of the service, as you would expect with it being SaaS. But BMC go a little further with BMC Helix. With BMC Helix, we don't just offer the patches and the upgrades or the backups for you as a customer to then run and, and try and automate or, or implement and then call up the vendor if you have issues during your upgrade patching or, or moving process. BMC run these for you. So we control and, and take care of those upgrades, patches and maintenance for you. So we of course involve you in the process. We detail to you when they're happening, how often they're happening, um, should there ever be any downtime? And of course, we at BMC do not want any downtime, as of course, I'm sure you don't want any downtime. But should there be any downtime, we of course inform you in advance uh, and, and arrange that time for the downtime to occur. Whereas other SaaS vendors will often give you the ability to perform you know, the backups or the upgrades or the patches, but they rely on you to perform the work. Whereas at BMC, we're trying to take that away from you to allow you to get on with your day jobs and let BMC focus on keeping the service up and running. Backups, as I mentioned, of course, included with the service as well, as is disaster recovery. And our DR plan offers a 15 minute recovery point objective and a recovery time objective of four hours. So ultimately what that means is there's a maximum of a 15 minute possible data loss in the event of a complete disaster. But remember, we don't use our disaster recovery plan for common failures in hardware or software. Our highly available architecture is designed to handle that. So our DR strategy is reserved for true DR events. So, you know, acts of guard, fire, flood, theft, all of those things. How about backups at any time? You as a customer can request a backup or restore from a backup and BMC will operate that for you. And we offer a 90 day retention for the majority of all our Helix services. So if we look into now the deployment architecture. So we have regions where we deliver the service. So this is where the, uh, if you like, the software, the products are installed on the servers in the data centers. Of course, our, our service is worldwide. So we have support worldwide, unless of course that you're using the um, federal authorization to operate moderate or DOD IL4 offering, where of course they are US based um, staff only. But we have data centers around the globe and these regions are not replicated. And what I mean by not replicated, I'm talking, so if you're in the US region, that is not replicated outside of the US. Likewise, if you're in Australia, that is not replicated to the US or any EMEA or any other region. So your data resides in that country where the service is started from. And in each one of those um, regions or locations, we have multiple availability zones. And in each one of those multiple availability zones, we'll have your dev, QA, and prod environments as a minimum. And you as a, uh, you know, an agency or, or, or government entity can request more environments if you wish. So some of our customers occasionally prefer to have a dedicated training environment maybe, or maybe you would like a dedicated demo environment as well as your development, QA, and production environments. BMC can move all the uh, code in between those for you, refresh them and copy from one to the other as requested during the service. But each one of these availability zones is built out with your environments. So at any time, a whole availability zone could go down, which is ultimately a separate data center and the service 
theory being the theory sh should carry on regardless. So our focus is really on that high availability for our customers. Now our architecture typically consists of, Dave, you heard David talking around that containerization approach, and of course, yes, um, we are no different in SaaS, that is our strategy. So everything is containerized, we use technologies such as Docker, OpenShift, Kubernetes, Rancher, to name a few, um, to help BMC manage, monitor, scale our Helix service. And all of these technologies are not for our customers to interact with, they're more for us, BMC, the Helix SaaS vendor, to give great service to you. So we can uh, trend and see what's going on with the CPU, memory, and infrastructure, so we can ensure we can scale and, and, um, with elasticity so the service is always on. So let's look at connectivity. So how do our customers access the service? So if you're a commercial uh, user or you're in a FedRAMP moderate um, service, then all traffic is over the internet. And that's of course encrypted, uh, forced encryption as well. If you're using the DoD IL-4 service, FedRAMP DoD IL-4, then that obviously will be going over the NIPONET, um, which is like a private um, internet connection. So it's over the internet, but it's a private internet connection. Now, as all user traffic will flow over that um, internet, or in the, in the NIPONET case, the private internet connection, um, quite often customers uh, like to whitelist um, or, or restrict the service to your domain or subnet. So uh, uh, quite a few of our customers will give us the range. We will input that range into the service. So only traffic from your network will be accepted to the Helix service. Some customers then go a step further and say, actually, they'd like to use their own um, single sign-on or your own IDP, your own identity provider. So maybe you're using Azure AD today, or maybe it's Ping Identity or Sibletooth or Okta or Azure AD, whatever it may be. So we would typically federate using uh, SAML um, to your own IDP so you can continue using your own authentication and single sign-on as you are today. Now, any, um, any connectivity that requires the service to be on the same network as the Helix service. So I'll use an example like an ODBC database uh, read connection. That would require uh, a network-to-network -network VPN-like connection. We use something called Client Gateway. And Client Gateway is, a, is essentially a, like a VPN. It uses WebSockets um, and Carsing technology. And of course, it's all encrypted. Your service is also encrypted, of course, at, at, at rest, and I'll, I'll talk about that just in a second as we get into security. So, into security, very important, of course, um, for this space. You know, we're, you're entrusting BMC uh, and, our, and our operators to look after your data. So it's critical that we do this, um, you know, we say what we do and we do what we say. So it starts off with a, a, a governance layer. So this is how, you know, um, essentially how we're trained, how, we, how we're audited. Has Charles Binns um, done his compliance and ethics training this, this quarter? If I haven't, ultimately that's a sackable offense at BMC. And that compliance and ethics training may, may combine um, security, data privacy, or auditability, um, copyright, all these types of topics, for all of our BMC, SaaS staff to undertake. And then of course we'll move through to things like the physical, maybe the data center um, security. So, you know, are the walls sufficiently high? Are the trees a certain distance away from the building? You know, is, is it on a hill? Is it, does it have a moat around it? Do you have card key access? Is there man traps? Is there video surveillance? Is there fingerprint readers on each of the cages within the facility? So all of these things are then the, the physical controls and the perimeter controls around the actual um, data center itself. And of course, that will be um, have certificates to prove that it is meeting those requirements, whether that's a, you know, a FedRAMP moderate or, or DOD IL-4 or, or a, you know, a, a SOC 2 type 2 or SOC 1 um, or in addition. And then as we get through to things like the, 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 uh, some of the infrastructure, like the firewalls, the perimeters and the, the infrastructure, the network, the endpoints, um, and the protections levels that we have on that, we get into the role-based actor. So this is now around the staff. So if it's the FedRAMP authorized to operate service, then of course those staff, if they're touching or, or handling or managing any in any contact with any of your data in any way, then, then that is uh, the U, that US-based uh, resource only. 
And, and even if a US based resource, it goes another level of that. So for example, if I'm a first line support um, agent, I will have a very different access privileges than maybe a, a third line or, or, or DBA uh, manager access would be. And those roles are very different. Now, if I need to request some privileges to access a server, maybe to perform some uh, to help a support ticket possibly, or maybe I need to do some maintenance to clear some log files out of a DB, I would have to request that access. And that goes through an access request policy in BMC, it goes through a level of approvals. And then once that's approved, I, for example, would get that username and password for a period of time. I would perform my work, and then that username and password is automatically revoked um, from, my, uh, from my access. So at no time do, do staff have sort of usernames and accounts for accessing um, or for, for the service. And there's, of course, there's no group accounts either. And then as we get through to, of course, the physical and actual data at rest, which, of course, is, is, is absolutely encrypted um, at rest as well. So BMC hold the encryption keys in a separate encryption key vault um, and rotation on request. Uh, and of course, at the time, at, let's say at the end of the contract or you decide to terminate the agreement and, and maybe move on premises, as David was talking about, containerization there, then we would first, just, you know, once you've got your data back, we would destroy the data by first destruction of those encryption keys and then overwriting with binary ones and zeros per uh, NIST 800-53 in the the FedRAMP ATO uh, policies. So I started to allude to a few certification and here, here's a bit more of a list for you around some of the certifications of services. This is the service that has. So we as a service, the most important thing for of course the federal um, agencies is that uh, ATO, um, which is a moderate and we have IL4, DODR4 on its way. That's all been completed. We're just waiting for the uh, paperwork. What's the other thing? So, so if, if um, you, you do have interests about things like GDPR, binding corporate rules, um, certainly if some of our uh, other, other uh, federal agencies that, are, that use the service, they're quite interested to see how we handle that these days in Europe. We have something called binding corporate rules, which allows us to be data controller and processor for customers' data. And we're very fortunate because we're probably one in maybe a dozen or so companies in the world to have controller and processor. And we were in the first half a dozen to actually attain that um, some years ago. And that actually protects our European customers who previously relied on things like Safe Harbor, which obviously is no longer relevant, or Privacy Shield, which is of course, again, no longer uh, deemed relevant uh, in, the, in the eyes of uh, the EU data privacy rules. But binding corporate rules still are. We also have, our, of course, our SOC 2 Type 2s and our ISO uh, certifications, which are very important as well. And we happily share all these certifications and uh, attestations on request. Our data centers, of course, have a number of certifications as well. And these do may vary per region. So for example, a, a data center in Australia may have a very different set of um, certifications that maybe one in the US would have, but, but typically they are very similar and comparable and typically as well, not typically, absolutely, if you are a FedRAMP uh, customer uh, from a federal agency going into our uh, federal uh, Adrian West facility on the East Coast there, then obviously that is the one that has the FedRAMP moderate or DOD IL4 ATO. Customers quite often ask here as well about um, the test that you as a, as a customer may perform on the service. So it's all very well, of course, we can share the certifications we can with you, and we'll obviously take audits from you and share evidence what we can to prove that we are doing what we say we're doing and we are forceful and tracing all of these things. Um, but sometimes customers ask that they'd like to perform some of their own tests. Now, typically in a, in a SAS contract, you'll see the language to say you are not allowed to perform any you know, penetration tests or hacking tests because that would be seen as a threat and we'd suspend the service. However, obviously we understand that you do need to uh, perform some level of testing and working with BMC will absolutely work with you to um, look at the tests you'd like to perform because um, we obviously need to protect our other SaaS customers. So as long as you work with BMC and we do it jointly, we'll happily uh, do tests with you. So last few slides now, um, just talk a little bit about transparency. And with SAS, as I mentioned near the start, you're entrusting BMC with your data 
and looking after your service for you. So we see it imperative to share um, as much data as we can. So whether that's you know, application logs, for example, from your service, so you can consume them into your own SIEM system, or whether that's showing you the license consumption of you know, what you've purchased and what you're consuming, or the availability of the service, or what support tickets you've currently got logging through the system, or whether your service is currently uh, coming up with any maintenance with a change calendar, um, so you can see in advance what's coming down the line, or where people are logging in from. So all of this we, we, we have on trust.onbmc.com. And this is something that all of our, our customers have. They have their own unique dashboard to see their own service um, so they can see what's going on with the service. So you see what we see. And, and just lastly, um, all of these things that I've been talking about today around the, the processes, the procedures, the maintenance, the upgrades, the availability policies, service credits, um, and, and how we handle support. These are all documented on docs.bmc.com. And this is for the world to see. It's a worldwide industrialized SaaS service for all to use. And I'll caveat, of course, with unless you're a federal agency, which of course is a slightly different uh, twist, but again, all our federal agencies follow that same SaaS service as well. Um, so at any time, please feel free uh, to reach out to that site. Or if you have any questions, don't hesitate to, to contact myself or your your team and the partner here that, that, that's helping you with your, your move. So thank you very much, um, and I'll hand over. Thank you so much, Charles, and thank you, David. Uh, another great presentation. I really do appreciate all your uh, efforts and the time that you took out of your busy schedules today to join us and present for us. It's very much appreciated. We have a lot of folks in the audience today that have enjoyed the presentation as well. Folks, we have run out of time today. We just don't have time for questions, uh, but I do want your questions. So please email those to us at info at flycastpartners.com. Uh, as always, you can go to our website. You can chat with our live IT experts. That's what they're there for. They're there for you. Uh, we also encourage you to give us a call at 844-FLYCAST. That's 844-359-2278. Don't forget about our raffles, folks. We have the weekly raffle and we have the customer raffle for that $500 lunch. Go to our website and sign up for those today. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to wish everybody a fantastic afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your week and stay safe until our next broadcast. Thank you.